Farnham lived with his wife Sarah, even though they had been married for a long time. They did not have any children. However, they never stopped praying to Allah and asked that Allah bless them with a child. He knew that she was too old to get pregnant. She suggested that Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, marry her helper, Siti Hajjah. However, Siti Hajjah did not agree with the idea. She was just a helper and felt that she was not worthy enough to marry a prophet. Siti Hajjah felt sorry for Sarah and eventually agreed to marry Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him. Not long after Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, and Siti Hajjah were married, she gave birth to a lovely baby boy and named him Ismail. Sarah was very happy with the birth of Ismail, peace be upon him. The three of them lived happily with Ismail, peace be upon him, present. Not long after that, Allah ordered Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, to bring Hazar and Ismail, peace be upon him, out of Mecca. Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, left with Siti Hazar and Ismail, peace be upon him. They traveled through the desert, not knowing where to go. Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, then arrived at a dry and empty place in the desert. He was very sad to leave his wife and son there. However, his faith in Allah was strong and he knew that Allah would take care of them. Before returning home, Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, told his wife, Hajar, I leave you in the hands of Allah Almighty. Allah will protect and take care of you. Please do not be sad. We will meet again. Inshallah. Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, then prayed to Allah, Our Lord, I have settled some of my descendants in an uncultivated valley near your secret house. Our Lord, that they may establish prayer, so may courage among the people incline toward them and provide food for them from the food that they might be grateful. Surah Ibrahim, verse 37. Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, said goodbye to his wife and son. It was indeed a sad day for him. He did not know when he will meet them again. The Prophet hugged Ismail, peace be upon him, and Hajjah and continued his journey home. Siti Hajjah looked at the desert with a heavy heart. There was no single tree to see them or drop of water for a son. However, Siti Hajjah's faith in Allah was very strong. She believed that Allah would help and protect them. Young Ismail, peace be upon him, was hungry and started to cry. Siti Hajjah tried to feed him with her own milk. However, she did not have any milk left because she had not eaten or drank for several days. Siti Hajjah felt sorry for her son. She placed him on the ground and went to look for water. She thought she saw a little water on the ground between Mount Safa and Mount Marwa. She ran seven times from Mount Safa to Mount Marwa to look for water. Unfortunately, it was this mirage in the desert. Young Ismail, peace be upon him, did not stop crying during the whole time. He then started dumping his feet on the ground. All of a sudden, water gushed out from below Ismail, peace be upon his feet. Siti Hajjah was surprised when she saw the fountain of water. Siti Hajjah quickly cupped the water in her hands and gave it to Ismail, peace be upon him. Then Siti Hajjah held the water in her hands and said, Zam Zam, which means to stop or to collect. It is known as the Zam Zam well. Siti Hajjah was indeed grateful with the water that Allah had given them. Siti Hajjah and Ismail, peace be upon him, continued their life there. Many travelers dropped by the place to get some water from the Zamzam well. Soon trees started to grow and bear fruits near the well. The place became a small village and people started to live there. The village was known as Makkah. One day, Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, decided to visit his son and wife in Makkah. He was surprised to see that the desert had become a village. There were fruit trees and farm animals everywhere. Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, was very happy to see Siti Hajjah and Ismail, peace be upon him again. Ismail, peace be upon him, had grown up since he had left him years ago. Ismail, peace be upon him, was very excited to see his father for the first time. Several years passed by and Ismail, peace be upon him, was now a young boy. One night, Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, had a dream, and in that dream, Allah ordered him to sacrifice his son, Ismail, peace be upon him. And when he reached with him the age of extradition, he said, O oh my son, indeed I have seen in a dream that I must sacrifice you. 
So see what you think, he said. Oh, my father, do so as you are commanded. You will find me, if Allah wills, of the steadfast. Surah as safat verse 102. Prophet Ibn, peace be upon him, knew it was a test. Ismail, peace be upon him, was Allah's gift to him. And if Allah's will to have Ismail, peace be upon him, sacrificed, then Prophet Ibn, peace be upon him, must carry it out. It was indeed very difficult for Prophet Ibn, peace be upon him, to carry out such an order. However, the Prophet's faith in Allah was very strong, and he was willing to obey Allah. Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, then told Ismail about Allah's order. Ismail, peace be upon him, was not afraid and was willing to obey Allah. The villagers thought that Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, was crazy for wanting to sacrifice his own son. A few days later, Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, brought Ismail, peace be upon him, to a mountain area. Both of them were prepared to carry out Allah's order. Ismail, peace be upon him, had a few requests before the sacrifice was done. Ismail, peace be upon him, wanted Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, to take off his suit when he performed the sacrifice. Ismail, peace be upon him, did not want his mother to get upset when she sees blood on his father's suit. Ismail, peace be upon him, also requested that his father use a sharp knife so that the sacrifice is done quickly. Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, hugged and kissed his son for the last time. Ismail then lay down and waited calmly for the sacrifice to be carried out. Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, closed his eyes and waved the knife. All of a sudden, he heard a voice, Ibrahim, you have indeed obeyed Allah's order. Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, opened his eyes and saw a sheep in place of Ismail, peace be upon him. Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, was told to sacrifice the sheep instead. And when they had both submitted and put him down upon his forehead, we called to him, O Ibrahim, you have fulfilled the vision indeed, and we thus reward the doers of good. Indeed, this was a clear trail, and we have ransomed with a great sacrifice, and we left for him among later generations. Peace be upon him. Surah as safat verse 103 to 109. Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, was very grateful that Allah had spared his son's life. It was indeed very difficult for Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, to carry out Allah's order to sacrifice his son. However, Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, faith in Allah was very strong. He was willing to leave his son's faith in the hands of the Creator, Allah Almighty. And Allah, the most merciful and compassionate, has spared Ismail's life. A few years later, Allah ordered Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, and Ismail to build the Kaaba in Mecca. Once the Kaaba was completed, Allah ordered Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, to guide the people to perform their hajj at Kaaba or Betula, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Since then, Muslims from all over the world perform the hajj at the Kaaba on the 10th of Dhul Hijjah. On this day, cows or goats are sacrificed and donated to poor people in the remembrance of Ibrahim, peace be upon him's sacrifice. This day is known as Eid al Atta to all Muslims around the world. Prophet Ismail, peace be upon him, grew up and Allah made him as a prophet and a messenger of Allah. He was sent to the people of Manka, Yemen, Amalak, and the surrounding areas. Prophet Ismail, peace be upon him, told the people of Mecca, who were from the Jahan tribe, to worship Allah. He reminded them on the punishment that they would receive if they refused to do so. Prophet Ismail, peace be upon him, did not receive much resistance from the people of Mecca. He accepted Prophet Ismail, peace be upon him's teachings easily. It is believed that Prophet Ismail, peace be upon him, passed away when he was 145 years old in Mecca.